Hi, I'm Jackie. Um, I am a firefighter paramedic here in Madison Heights. Um, I've been here just about three years. It'll be three years next month. We're going to do a quick tour of one of the engines here and give you guys a little insight into some of the equipment we carry and some of its capabilities. So this is engine 71. We have um, three engines, our two frontline engines, engine 71 and engine 72 are set up exactly the same. They're the exact same truck. Everything's in the exact same place. It runs out of station one um, here in the north end. Um, it'll carry the captain or whoever's um, in charge of the shift that day. And then one of the firefighters will be assigned to drive um, and engine operate this truck. Um, it goes on any fire call we have, any uh, car accident, any gas leak, and then it goes on um, any priority medicals um, along with the rescue to lend an extra set of hands um, that the rescue might need. Um, so the driver of the engine will be sitting in this seat. This is where all of the controls are for the lighting, the sirens, um, putting the truck in pump to make water come out. Um, and then whoever's assigned to drive that truck that day is also usually in charge of cooking for that station. We carry all of our medical equipment in here as well. Um, these are ALS engines, so all of our um, engines are paramedic engines as well. So we carry all of the same equipment that our um, rescues carry. Drug boxes, monitors, oxygen, um, anything that we can do on the rescues can be done on the engines as well. We just can't transport. So all of our EMS equipment's kept in here. We keep all of our gear in here. We have some slide out drawers that we keep all of our fire gear in, one on each side. We do have two additional seats back here. If we have uh, the correct staffing that day, we can put some people in the back of the engine. Makes a fire response um, a little bit quicker and more efficient to have more hands on duty. This is our pump panel. So the driver engine operator of this truck, this is something they know like the back of their hand. They're in charge of making water come out. Um, so they'll attach to a hydrant with um, some of this big five inch hose um, and then it'll hook into here and that feeds water into the engine. Um, and then depending on which hose line we want water to come out of, they'll pull one of these levers um, and then these screens up here can um, decide what water pressure we want them to come out. Depending on what size hose and what length hose, um, the pressure that the water comes out needs to be a little bit different. So everybody who is available to drive this truck has been through pump training, engineering training, pretty rigorous stuff here and in an official class. So we have, these are called cross lays. These are hoses um, that go through the truck so they can be pulled on either the driver or the passenger side. These are 150 feet in length. We have two of those inch and three quarter on the side. And then we have 200 feet of two and a half up there in the same lay. And then we also have some off of the back and off of the front bumper that I'll show you as well. This is called the engineer's compartment. It's got um, a bunch of different fittings, nozzles, wrenches, tools that we might need. Um, if we wanna put a different nozzle on one of the hoses, if we need different fittings um, to make different connections work, they're all there. And then we also have some more hand tools in here um, for forcible entry. Um, bolt cutters, sledgehammers, things like that. Now we also have some cones and then some random other hand tools. These make the light tower um, and our um, deck gun are all electronic, can all be controlled from the ground here. So nobody has to go up. We don't have to dedicate a person um, to manning those. We can control them here as the engineer. In this cabinet, we have a bunch of hand tools. Um, Every, but every firefighter that gets off the truck is supposed to grab a tool. Um, we have our axes, halogens, this is called the bad axe. Um, it's kind of a combination of a sledgehammer and an axe. Um, and then we have some portable scene lighting on the back here that is battery controlled. In these cabinets down here we have extra SCBA bottles. Um, so we can ch uh, change out our bottles if we used all of the air in our SCBA pack. We carry four extra on each engine and then two extra on each rescue. We have a slide out tray here with four SCBAs. Um, because we can carry up to four people on this truck, we have SCBA for every person. Everybody checks their SCBA out in the morning, sets their strap lengths how they want, just for easy deployment. 
Um, and then some fire extinguishers. We have a water only fire extinguisher and then we have an ABC fire chem uh, extinguisher. And we have um, our hydrant bag. So our, uh, that bag up there we will grab every time we're gonna tag a hydrant. And it's got all the fittings, wrenches, adapters that we need to connect a hydrant to our truck. On the back here, we have a couple different cabinets. So up top, we have a bunch of different hose lengths. In here is our, all of our ladders. Uh, so we have a couple different extension ladders. We have a roof ladder, and then we have an attic ladder, which is a real skinny foldable ladder. Um, and then we have some different hand tools, some pipe pool, poles, and the New York hook. Um, all different tools for different things that need to be done on the fire ground. We also carry a backboard back here as part of our EMS uh, required equipment. And then in this down here, we have two different saws. Um, so this one is a typical chainsaw used for cutting open roofs. Um, it can do wood. Um, and this one right here, it's called a K12. We have some different blades we can put on it, whether we need to do cement or wood or metal. Um, it's kind of a more heavy duty construction type saw and can cut through a lot of more different materials. Um, so those get checked uh, every shift and uh, made sure that they're in good working condition. Coming around this way, this is our extrication tool equipment. Uh, so we have a bunch of different ways and tools we can get into cars if needed to, get into different doors. So all of these are going to be our Hearst Jaws of Life battery powered uh, extrication tools. So we have the cutters which um, again are battery powered and they're pretty much like giant scissors. So those are used to cut. We have the spreaders, which work the exact same, but they spread. And then this is called a ram. So um, this has like a telescoping arm, and that can use to, if someone's trapped in a car, push um, the car away from and spread even more. Um, you know. These are um, called Rescue 42 struts. Um, and we use those to stabilize a car to make sure it doesn't roll on us while we're doing some extrication work. Um, we have a couple different options in here as well. We have some airbags that we can use with, again, these SCBA bottles to blow them up and um, lift cars, lift debris, anything that somebody might be trapped under, we can use that, um, fill it full of air and lift something off of somebody or something. Uh, we also have different cribbing that we can use to stabilize our cars as well. Um, we have a couple different tools. We have an air chisel and we have what's called a rabbit tool, which is a pneumatic tool that we use for forcible entry into doors. Um, so anything we need to get some forcible entry or extrication would be found in this cabinet. This cabinet here is going to hold all of our high-rise equipment or rapid intervention RIT equipment. So we have a couple different RIT bags. Um, this red RIT bag here is going to have an extra, or an extra air bottle, extra mask that's all hooked up for rescue of a downed firefighter. Um, if they're running out of air, if they're malfunctioned, uh, SCBA, if their mask got knocked off or cracked, we have um, options to rescue a down firefighter, get them air, get them out. Um, and then there's another bag, another RIT bag up there that has more rope, more webbing. If we need to extricate a firefighter, we can wrap them up in the webbing, carry them out, pull them out. Any other tools that we might need, cutters, things to cut them out of downed wires if they're entangled. Anything we need to rescue one of our own is gonna be in one of these two bags. This is um, a high-rise bag, so it has a length of two and a half hose to a gated Y, and it has a standpipe um, connection with a um, pressure gauge. So in any high-rise building, we have some of our senior center towers, um, some of our hotels. In every hallway stairway is a pipe running from the ground up through the floors, um, and that's water access for us up on the higher floors that are hoses from the ground level can't reach. So we'll hook this up to the standpipe in the hallways and then feed our um, feed our high-rise pack full of hoses up there. So we carry all of that up to 
the floors um, connect in and then we'll stretch this through the hallways to whatever room is on fire um, that we need to access. This is a cabinet um, that we have our PPV fan so we can use this fan if there is smoke that's limiting our visibility in a house. Um, we'll put this in the doorway or in the windowsill and try and push some of that smoke out, increase our visibility. Um, we have a hose reel that um, we can hook up other portable scene lighting to or anything that might need an extra power source. And we have um, a foldable ladder that we can use to get into smaller spaces that maybe some of our bigger ladders don't fit in. Um, this uh, other side here, we carry some more of that um, five inch hose, that uh, supply line that we need. We have other connections on the other side here. And then these are the same hoses that we saw on the other side, they go through, so they can be deployed from either side, depending on which side is closest, or whichever side is facing the house um, or building, uh, we can pull that off of. This just goes into the other side of the cab. We again, we keep all of our EMS kit equipment in these cabinets. This would be where the captain or the shift boss uh, sits and uh, makes their decisions. They can take command from here. They can run scenes from here. We have a computer. We have all of the ra necessary radio equipment in there. And then on our front bumper, we have another um, hose line that can be deployed. This is what we use typically for any car fire or dumpster fire. It's just easier, quicker to deploy. It's another 100, 100 feet. And then we keep 50 feet of this five inch supply line on here too. And it's already connected to the front bumper. Just another option of how we can um, hook up to a hydrant depending on where the hydrant location is compared to where the fire is.